You just can't miss the Envy McKee Show. I am the stone that the builder refused. I am the visual, the inspiration that made ladies sing the blues. I'm the spark that makes your idea bright. The same spark that lights the dark so that you can know your left from your right. I am the ballad in your box, the bullet in the gun, the inner glow that let you know to call your brother son. The story that just begun, the promise of what's to come. And I'm going to remain a soldier till the war is won. won. Chop, chop, chop. The Envy McKee Show, exclusively on Word. <laughs> Envy's evolution is the Envy McKee Show. Hey, we're Philly's own kindred, the family soul. Hey, what's up? This is Kevin Carr. Hey, this is Lady Alma. This is Greg. And Halana. And we are the Woke Bays. Yo, yo, what's up? This is your boy Genuine right here on the Envy McKee Show. And I always stay tuned. Join the Envolution exclusively on Word. Yes, welcome back. The Envy McKee Show right here. WRD Progressive Black Talk Media. My name is Envy McKee. Of course, this is Starfolk University, the only is on-air school for modern mystics. Our shift prompt for the month of March is the art of being known, all caps. Known is standing for kind, notably, overstanding, wisdom's nature. And we have been, like, this is like the perfect configuration. When I tell you spirit puts these things together, the cosmic mother, just be, woo! This is, this is beautiful. This is a beautiful, yeah. beautiful setup for this conversation. We were talking a little bit about Amanda Seals, and I want to make sure everybody can, can remember what they were saying. So I took a few notes. So, Jen, before, right before we went to break, you were talking about um, Amanda and the difference between being uh, educated and smart. And you, Mayette, were talking about... Um, what it's like, like that, that thing of being a grandmother as a healed woman and being able to, you know, recognize that children should grow up as they truly are because we get in the way. We as parents trying to protect our children often yeah. get in the way because, you know, sometimes getting along, going along to get along mm -hmm. is the easier path. Mm -hmm. But so this is where we were. And so yeah. we're going to start with Jen. So I was saying that I believe that um, Amanda is both educated and she's smart. And then I think those are two different things. You can have someone who is smart, that has never been to school, never been to college, never had um, formal education. And then you can have somebody who is well-educated, has read every book that's been published, but cannot take that information and translate it into action because they just don't have the smarts. And she, I believe possesses both you know she's very well educated she um, was at the top of her class but she also has this brilliant way of connecting what she knows to what we see what we hear and what we should know and that whole stream in between that right mm -hmm. um, I feel like she also has this um, and as you mentioned she is a comedian so she does have that timing and that wit to um, say these things, even if it's not something said in humor, I think timing and wit with the education and the smarts with whatever topic she's covering makes you engaged with the topics that she's covering and make you listen to her perspective. And I just personally appreciate that about her. And I also think that her fearlessness is um, admirable because there's so many people that would love to say what she says but mm -hmm. don't for fear of the repercussions. <clears throat> She's not afraid. Mm -mm. Mm. It's child. I'll be looking. I'll be like, ooh. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and, I won't, I'll share her stuff, but I'm not reposting her. I'll share, <laughs> I share <laughs> and repost. And, it, and But you know what's interesting about that? And I recognize, I recognize the level of bravery that it takes to do the work that she does. Mm -hmm. And especially in a public space. And as somebody who grew up in the generation that I grew up in with the parents mm -hmm. that I had, that respectability was really important. And, but at the same time, my parent, I'm going to say my dad, my dad was like the NAACP activist, if that mm -hmm. makes any sense. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like mm -hmm. he was, the, th that is the respectability. That's like the pinnacle of respectability activism. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's like there are there are methods in which, right. you know what yeah. I mean? There are there are 
tried and true ways in which it's like the <clears throat> the Martin Luther King. The, even though, let's be clear, Martin Luther King was a revolutionary. He just they did not like him. Right. But it, it's I'm gonna say the whitewashed Martin Luther King <laughs> way to to do activism. It's mm -hmm. like you 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 want to stand up. You want to get um printed in the newspaper. You want people to know that you said something. But you don't want to make the white people mad. Right. I think that also comes from their their generation, right? Our parents come from yeah. the generation of um, desegregation. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. they have that balance of, yes, sir. And, <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's and, it. Right? That's and, it. And, the, and the middle finger. We'll, um, talk, about them. we'll talk about them in the house. Right. If yeah. you go out there in public, you would. Quiet. But that's right. how you stay safe, right? Yeah. That's it's how, how they, you, it's a different time. It's yeah. a different time. So if we think about the beautiful attributes of our parents, because that's what I had to come into realization of, of what did I grow from with how I was raised by the times that I was raised by my mom and the times that I was raised by my grandmother and my auntie mom. How how is what they did helped me? What did, what did they do that helped me? That made me into a person that is or that um, has uh, that operates in integrity. What part of their raising caused me to operate in integrity, to speak in integrity, to think in integrity? What part of their raisings helped me to be the love that I am? And then where am I in when I was raising my children? And if we can look at all of the, what, what did I do well at? And then we look at the, the children from that, because it is actually a trickle effect from all of them, from them and then before them and then us and then our children. They, we're, seeing, um, the, we're seeing the product or the result of all of that. Because I didn't start, um, I was that you do as I say, not as I do parent until my children were in high school. And then something happened. Something happened in my life. You know, they call it the dark night of the soul. Mm. But I, you have several of them. But this one caused me to look at me. And I was like, okay, how can I be different? As I realized those things that hurt me that I was holding on to, you know, you do the work. Mm. And um, coming into... Um, coming into my purpose unknowingly that that's what I was doing. Um, but I had to heal me. And then when I healed me, I was able to see clearly and was like, okay, mommy and them did a great job in so many areas, but what I took from them are the things that I despised of them. And it changed and it presented itself differently to my children, but it was the exact same thing. And when I realized that and I had the eyes that were open, I was able to go and apologize to my children and tell them how sorry I was because I did not realize what I was doing. And in my mind, I was protecting them from certain things. That's right. You know, so if we look at, if we take, if we take everybody's style and we look at what it is that was great and we, our children are the product of that because at one point I know all three of us and I'm sure many other women and men alike have gone through a process of realization and a lot of people are raising their children differently. So now that I see, I get a do-over, we're talking about that, a do-over with my grandchildren. I have three beautiful grandboys and I had them for nine years. I thought I was going to be done. No, <laughs> you got to do it over. But this time you're going to do it good. You're going to do it well. You're going to see your product of all the things that you healed from, and you're going to pour that into those children. But then, because I had already apologized to my children, they were there to help me with their newfound selves. That I, they were already them just outside the house. Right? Mm -hmm. but then, mm -hmm. they right. then they were able to be them inside the house with mama, and they were like, oh, she cool. Oh, she cool. So I became not someone that they loved in a different way. They respected, not because I, you're going to do what I tell you to do, but respected because I, as a parent, have earned it. Mm -hmm. See, we think we're not supposed to earn respect. Mm -hmm. We think we're not supposed to earn it because we gave birth to them. Mm -hmm. Because that's how we were taught. Yeah. But 
for me, and it may not be this for everyone, but for me, they my, they began to respect me and hold me hold me in such high regard because they were like, oh my God, did she just apologize to me? Right. And she was honest. She brought up what I didn't even say. Was she listening to me on my phone call earlier today? When I was talking about her to my friends, was she? Did she hear me? Because she's telling me everything I want to say to her. She's admitting it. And that brings about this beautiful change with us in society. And that is kindly. Give me the shift prompts again. <laughs> okay, here we go. Wait, let me find it. Let me find it. Kind? That is kindly. kindly. I, kind what? Notably. Kind. Notably overstanding mm -hmm. wisdom's nature. Mm -hmm. So I am kindly, kindly working on myself. I worked on myself in a gentle manner. Yeah. Gentle. Gentle, mm -hmm. gentle, gentle. And and I'm able to see and operate in a form of integrity with my children. Mm -hmm. So it has this, and so wisdom is speaking. Uh, wisdom is speaking. The nature of wisdom is speaking through me, speaking mm -hmm. through you, sister, speaking through you, sister. It is speaking through us because we have allowed ourselves to have ears to open, Listen. to hear. The heart is open to hear. I'm learning from you just by what you're sharing. That is wisdom's nature speaking through you. You know? So I think that we as women are pretty dang, um, you know, tough. Spectacular. We are sweet. We are kind. We are gentle. We're phenomenal. We're fierce. We're warriors. We're everything. And we don't have to be everything. We just can rest in everything that we actually are. That's right. I think you that that you said a key point right there. We don't have to be everything, That's right. but we can be. There's nothing I can't do, and anything I can't do is because I haven't tried it yet. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. I used to. There was a there was a point in my it went in my um had this phase that I was in where I called myself a life explorer. Explorer. People would be like, well, "What do you do?" I'm a life explorer. You know what I mean? Like, and I that, <laughs> and. I, I was actively in the space of, I want to see if there's something I can't do. Mm. And that was, that moment, like that like seven year span was the most fun I had because I just, I didn't care. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't worried and I was just willing to, like you said, be open hearted and see where it was kind of like that. Remember that movie? And I don't know this is a corny movie, but it was, um, uh, what's her name? Where she was running from the altar and she had married all these, she had, tr oh, she the had run away bride? a the runaway guy? bride. She didn't even know what kind of eggs she liked because yeah. she had, and so I was kind of in that space of what do I really like? Mm -hmm. What do I really like? What really turns me on? Like what, what is really, and I, you know, I was growing food and I was like, like, I just realized that I could, that I was a farmer in my soul. I, like, I, I was like, I was having so much fun. And it wasn't until I started to nail some things down mm. where I started to, well, I figured out who I am. And this was when I, the, um, around the time where I had written the, my first two books, I think they all came out back to back. So I feel like this, this is during the time where I was writing the Stellar Trilogy. And then mm -hmm. I think once I started to nail some things down, I, I feel like I know myself now, where I have a better idea of who I actually am. And Dark Nights of the Soul started popping up. I had long ones, I had short ones. Mm -hmm. um, and I really started to, to, to welcome the idea of my spiritual journey in a more formal way mm -hmm. that... I started to recognize that I had tools to work through things. I had tools to have these kinds of conversations that, you know, back in the day, this would not be considered a conversation that you had out loud. Like, right. you might talk about it with your homiest home, home, home girl. Maybe yeah. one. Maybe, Maybe one. Maybe one, yeah. But you weren't going to be on a radio station and have this conversation publicly. People would be, are you insane? Right. You would have taken away to the people. The people would have okay. got you. They would have got you, right? 
<laughs> a king and got you. Come up at the house and get you. Oh my God. And so think about that for a moment. Let's, let's bring Amanda back into this fold because that's mm -hmm. what she's doing in mm -hmm. essence. She's having the quiet conversations out loud and using her platform to do it. And she's got like 2.2 million people that have access to her. Right? Yeah. The quiet conversations out loud. And I am beyond i'm not baffled i don't even want to say even bring i'm not baffled by this i am I, I over right and i overstand why they are coming for her in the way that they they are why especially the black spaces mm -hmm. the bet the mm -hmm. essence or whatever like they invite her to do the things for them do work for them but they're not inviting her to the award show, the celebratory things, the things where it's where it's fun mm -hmm. and light. And she, all she did, this is what happened this week. This is why this, she's in this this space. She she posted a video where she said, you know, I I do all this work for these for these places. I've hosted the BET Awards. I have never been invited <laughs> to the BET Awards. I hosted the, well, maybe it wasn't that, but she said she's never been to Black Girls Rock or the BET Honors or uh, Essence, whatever, whatever she was saying. And she's like, you know, I, I don't care about what the white spaces do or don't do with regard to my career. I my work, the literal work I do is about the love and liberation of black people. Right. Unapologetically. So, unapologetically. Right. And so she gets to be like the, the watchdog, you know, she gets to be the one that, that, the, that barks at what's going on. And then they're like, mm, we don't care about her. They She's a symbolic Cinderella. Hmm. So, when you think and, about and, and using that that languaging of dog and bark, she's not a dog. She's <laughs> there's none of those things. I'm I'm just right. trying to find like it, how there is this energy around. She can do the hard things. She could do the work that nobody else wants to do. But when it comes time for somebody to honor or acknowledge the work that she's doing, they won't do it publicly. No, she's the symbolic Cinderella. Mm -hmm. Cinderella did all the work in the house. She stitched all the dresses. Mm -hmm. She made her own dress and was told, no, you mm. can't go to the ball. You can't be seen. Mm. You can do all the work. You mm. cannot be seen. And when I think about those organizations that you just mentioned, those organizations, those are the, well, not BET is not an old organization, but Essence is. Um, they, they come from the, um, the code switch era, right? They come from mm -hmm. the here's how we are in public mm -hmm. versus how we are with each other. The dog and pony show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and they want to keep those checks coming. If mm -hmm. they align themselves with someone as outspoken as her, and then she says something that is controversial, then they take the heat also. And they lose the fine. Right. And, and we're in this space now of if your opinion goes against the grain of what we want the masses to think, mm -hmm. we have to publicly denounce you. Mm -hmm. And so if they don't publicly announce her, they will never have to publicly denounce, denounce her. her. Gotcha. And they can still continue uh -huh. to do work with her. That's just my opinion. You know, I, 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 love, I love that take. It makes sense. What are you about to say, Maya? I, I think it's really sad. Now, and, and I'm going to go based off of what, the two of you have just shared because I no longer watched anything in ref, ref, uh, I don't do much TV watching or I don't do much watching on um, the social platforms anymore. Um, but to hear what you all are describing it, all I kept hearing was the dog and pony show. Yep. And it's like you, you, you hit the nail right on the head. Um, what you're going to say, we really feel it. But we have sold ourselves out for the almighty dollar. And yeah. we're, we're, we're still, uh, we're actually uh, um, uh, dancing for Massa. We're actually doing what, and I hate to say it like this, and some people might, you know, may not agree, but it is what it is from based off of what you guys have shared. We, <laughs> we're still dancing for Massa, um, but we're doing it in a way because we feel like because we're getting money and we have the status 
that you know it's going to be all right so we can we can kind of deal with them telling what, us what to do as long as we get money we think that that is the end all be all but we're selling our souls so when you have a person or soul that is decided to be guided in the ways in which she delivers her purpose to the people oh yeah you like the field person i was about to say the other word you like the field person you can't come inside you can't come inside, but I want you out there doing all of that work because I'm in here and I get to serve myself. But if you do come inside, you got to go through the back door. And you got to go through Listen, the back door. We got we to gotta go break. We got to go to break. We got to go to break. We got to go to break. Y'all in here, preach it. This is the MPB Key Show right here on WRD, Progressive Black Talk Meet. I'm so glad we're on an independent, conscious black media station because, <laughs> Lord, when you talk about... Woo! We'll be what, my aunt? Black, baby. Are you a star person suffering from where do I really fit in this world displacement disorder or Werderfit for short? If you or someone you know is suffering from trying to fit into a world you were born to help evolve, but forgot, and so you did other stuff, you may be eligible to take part in a Star People Realignment Program, sponsored by the Wake Up the Star People of Earth Omniversal Alliance. For more information, read The Stellar Trilogy by Envy McKee, available at envymckee.com or wherever books are sold, like Amazon. And tune in to The Envy McKee Show, Friday nights, 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on wordradio.com and the Word app. Join the Envolution. The McKee Show. Hey, we're Philly's own Kindred, the family soul. Hey, what's up? This is Kevin Carr. Hey, this is Lady Alma. This is Greg. And Halana. And we are the Woke Bays. Yo, yo, what's up? This is your boy, Genuine, right here on the Envy McKee Show. And I always stay tuned. Join the Involution exclusively on Word. Ooh, Lord. I had to, I had to break out the, um, the candle. <laughs> Welcome back to the Envy McKee Show right here at WRD. Progressive Black Talk Media, of course, this is Star Folk University, the only is on-air school for modern mystics. Our shift prompt for the month of March is the art of being known. Known is standing for kind, notably overstanding wisdom's nature. In the woo-woo metaphysical studio with me, us, Jordan's here too, um, Jen Bragg Jones, our Dean of Heartful Entrepreneurship, and Mayette Ajay Ib, our Dean of Understanding and Life Skills. And when I tell you, these women... We're in here pulling our edges. My my edges are holding on for dear life. And I don't have, like, I didn't do nothing real special. I just put on a little headband. But my edges are like sis. <laughs> did you think, did you think in all of your existence that you would come in here and be talking about house Negro, field Negro, in a conversation about me, but the, it's the truth. Though. Yeah. Like the more we peel this back and unpack this, people are more concerned about their jobs and getting the bag than they are about the liberation of black people. Right. And that is what we're looking at. She can take her 2.2 million followers and she can amplify and, you know, do all those things, but we can't have her on our Vanguard own, just found out that, <laughs> but she, we can't have her on our Vanguard black rock owned uh, property mm -hmm. network, whatever it is, because you know, that is not about the liberation of the people that is masses house. Uh-huh. And what we do know for sure and for true that we will never uh, tear down Master's house using Master's tools. Not at all. Not ever. Game. It's like this. It's like, and, and you think about it. If we go from that, it's like that. It, you can also use that same with relationships, mm -hmm. with where it is that you are um, in, your, in your place of work. Um, when I realized this that I was in Mass's house when I was the floor manager at Nissan Motor Acceptance Corporation. I, you know, I had su supervisors, sub supervisors, and over 300 agents that I was seeing after. When I realized that was Mass's house, mm -hmm. 
And I wasn't allowed to be who I truly am because I don't know what they were looking at because as I was walking up the stairs in that company, when I say that I'm talking about climbing the ladder, in that company, I was being myself totally. But, but when they realized that I was in the get along, just to get along type of woman, then it was like, wait a minute, who are you? Who did we hire? Oh, my God. Because I was for the people. And it didn't matter to me what color they were. But I realized that I was in Massa's house. So I decided to take, it was like, your money don't rule me. How I left making six figures. And Lord Jesus went down to something that I was like, wait a minute. But I knew that I needed to do it. That's, that's when I stepped out on my own. So when you have, and I decided to stand myself apart. Just like this young lady we're speaking about, she's standing apart from Master's house. She's gonna always be in the field because what we, but, but what the, the the people in the house uh, don't realize is that they are controlled more than anything. They have no freedom at all. At least outside in the field, I get to smell the flowers. Isa, at least outside in the field, standing alone and apart, I ain't got to deal with all this stress on my neck. Mm-hmm. Because I am allowing myself to be free. And, and I'm, a, I'm allowed to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Because they're rarely seen. Because I'm outside amongst those like me that are outside. So if I fall, those of them that are outside with me are going to rally around me. And those of them that are in Massa's house, the studio, the BET, those of them that are in Massa's house, if you, if you, you can't, uh-uh. So the people that follows Massa house and is under that type of same frequency or mindset is going to naturally go after her because it's messing with their reality. Mm -hmm. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, I can listen to you. You like a radio station that I turn on every once in a while. I can listen to you because sometimes that part of me that knows it's true needs to hear it and needs to be fed. But I don't want to feed it a lot. I don't want it to grow because I'm afraid because I, I, I like it in this area. It's comfortable over here in, in Massa's house. So I'm going to go against you because you're, you're, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna make me want to uh, have to look at why I need to change. I don't want you to do that. So I'm going to tear you down. I'm going to tear you down. And because the majority of society, unfortunately, lives in Massa's mindset, lives in Massa's house, then they look at those of them or us that stand outside of the house and say, you better be happy that I ain't let you come up to the porch and get some water. You can go out there to the field and go get it. Get it the best way you can. Because you're messing with my reality now, and I can't have you to do that. I want to stay blind. I want to stay in a space where reality is the way that I feel good about it. But when people realize that they are being puppeted, when you realize that there is absolute, that we are individuals that are made, if we get down to the science of it, we're, 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 we are made of you know, the ganglions and the nerve, nerve plexuses, and we're made of all these things. We're not even really our own. But we're allowing our chains to be jerked. And, we, and, and, and it's, we're predictable. We're predictable. So those people that are the, the vanguards and the Black Rocks that are sitting in their living rooms together having tea, they laughing because they're saying, if we just do this, now watch if we do this, watch how everybody going to act. Because the majority of them, they're going to do what we ask. And so that's how you get those of them that are outside feeling a specific way. But based off of what you guys have shared, this young lady will not fall. Because she is resting in who she is. She's allowing wisdom's nature to speak through her. She's allowing it. A lot of people don't even know what it sounds like because they're so used to the rhetoric. They're so used to being told what to do because it's easiest that way. Mm. Listen, I don't know. I just, we got to go to break. Oh, but, I, but I don't want you to leave. Can y'all stay? I can stay. I can stay a little while longer, yes. 
Okay, so we're going to go to break. When we come back, we're going to we're going to cap up our Women's History Month. We're going to listen to how gangster Marion Anderson was because she was an operatic gangster. So I want you to to get into that, and then we're going to have more conversation not only with Jen Jones and uh, Co- My, uh, Coach Mayette Ib, but also Eric Nixon, DJ Frosty Phoenix is going to be back in the building at eight o'clock hour. This is the MV McKee Show right here on WRD Progressive Black Talk Media. Will be what, Jordan? Blah. Oh, black. <laughs> what she said. <laughs> Have you always wanted to learn an interdimensional language but not sure where to begin? Those basic language apps not offering the languages you really want to learn? Good news! Now there's Staretta Stone, offering languages like Tuastai and the Elder's Language, taught by native speakers so you and your friends can blurt out and up-level your vibrational frequency at the same time. For more information, read The Stellar Trilogy by Envy McKee, available at envymckee.com and wherever books are sold, like Amazon. And tune into The Envy McKee Show, Friday nights, 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, on 900 a.m., 96. One FM WURD and worldwide on WURDradio.com and the Word app. Join the evolution. <laughs> 